To assess the lateral elbow using ultrasound, we first of all place the proximal end of the probe onto the lateral epicondyle, and you can see the bone there. You can also see the radial head. It's important to assess for any fluid coming out of the radial head. Now often we will see this view, but it's important to understand that most issues when it comes to tennis elbow actually involve the ECRB tendon specifically. When we do this view here, there's three layers that we need to be aware of. The first layer at the top is the extensor digitorum tendon layer. Underneath that we have the EDM, so extensor digiti minimi and extensor carpi radialis brevis. And then underneath that we have the radial collateral ligament that joins up with the annular ligament that sits on top of the radial head. Now, we want to assess the ECRB specifically, and to do that, what we actually do is we slide the probe up and we angle back down, and what we can see here is the, specifically the fibres of ECRB attaching there onto the bone. And this is where we need to look carefully for any tendinopathic change, any, uh, any neovascularization and any tears. Now, if we move slightly more inferiorly, so underneath the radial head, that's when we can actually pick up a better image. You can see the fibular alignment there of the radial collateral ligament, which as we said is continuous with the annular ligament. Now, if we spin into transverse section, it's nice to be able to orientate ourselves around the cross section of the muscles. So first of all, you can see the radius and you can see the posterior interosseous nerve running through the deep and superficial heads of supinator. Now, if we move slightly superiorly, this is the muscle belly of ECRB, which is continuous with the muscle belly of ECRL, which remember doesn't attach onto the lateral epicondyle. Now, this is a structure that we need to get familiar with. Now, we call this the scorpion's tail, which is a nice soft tissue landmark, and that's actually specifically the tendon of ECRB, and that sits it's a little bit like semimembranosus in the hamstring, and that sits underneath extensor digitorum. Now, if we move more inferiorly, we can see extensor carpi ulnaris, um, which sits next to extensor digitorum, and just be aware that as we move more distally, we will see extensor digiti minimi um, in between those two muscle bellies. So if we move back up, that's extensor digitorum. And then as I mentioned, this is the area we really want to follow all the way back up to the lateral epicondyle. So we can follow it, trying to tilt the probe past the radial head, and you can see the annular ligament there, the long fibers of the annular ligament, and then as we come up, we can then see specifically that attachment onto the lateral epicondyle. And that really is where we need to look for any tendinopathic change or any tears, and also where we need to assess on power Doppler for any neovascularization. And that is specifically the ECRB tendon attachment onto the lateral epicondyle. And actually, this transverse view can be very, very helpful and is also a nice view to use if you're gonna do any interventional procedures such as PRP or dry needling, because you can really target that specific tendon. Thank you.